How's it going everybody? Knowledge by Tech here and today we're going to be overclocking the Sapphire R9390X Tri-X 8GB card. And as you can see here, I've done a little bit of overclocking already. The stock boost frequency on this card is about 1055 megahertz and I've been able to get 1085 megahertz before artifacting starts to occur. Any, any higher than this and artifacting will occur on this card and same with the memory frequency i've noticed as well um but now that we have the max frequencies before artifacting starts to occur in instability now we can start to undervolt the card and just sort of play around with that sort of stuff right now i have the superposition benchmark on my pc and i'm going to be testing with that 1080p high 1080p extreme tends to get about 21 fps on average on this card regardless of overclock so i'm just going to do 1080p high. Oh, and would you look at that? Oh, I think I know what that's from. I actually tried to do a little bit of undervolting by accident and forgot that I did that. The settings that I had before were actually 1200 millivolts. This was actually an undervolting attempt. My bad. All right, I'm gonna load my profile here. I tried undervolting it to about 1150 and we got artifacting as you can see there. We're gonna run the same test again, different voltages now. As you can see now there is zero artifacting memory voltage, 1125. It's not a very overclockable card per se because anything over about 30 megahertz above its boost clock from factory just gets artifacting and that's never any fun though. This is about all that I've been able to get out of it but we are still going to try and undervolt it a little bit. So let's start by going 1175 on all these. A simple 25 millivolt drop in voltages. And see how it handles that. Because it's been doing just fine with 1200 and it hasn't been doing very well with 1150. So 1175 may or may not be a sweet spot. Apply changes, and I'm gonna say that my undervolt and overclock our XML document. And we're gonna run the same test again and see if we get any artifact. I saw a little bit of artifacting there. It's a little bit saddening. It didn't quite handle, not quite, it almost did, but it didn't quite handle a 25 millivolt drop in the voltages. I'm gonna bring it 10 millivolts up. I'm gonna be optimistic and just keep going about it all as so until we get our minimum stable voltages. Run same test again. And we just completed an absolutely artifacting free run of the superposition benchmark with our overclock and undervolt settings with this card. Because apparently 10 millivolts makes all the difference. I'm gonna get a little bit, I'm gonna lower it another five millivolts because I'm just that kind of guy. I'm a little bit OCD. I like to see the best possible performance regardless of how hard to tell it is because I have nothing better to do except for overclock a five-year-old AMD graphics card the day after New Year's Eve. So actually it's New Year's Day today. Oh, the day after New Year's Eve because I don't know how to do math. The stock voltages on this card are 1250 when on boost of uh, 1055 megahertz on this card. Its stock voltages are 1250. And so far I've been able to get this card down to 1180 millivolts at higher frequencies being 1085 megahertz, about 30 megahertz higher than the stock 1055 megahertz with lower voltages. So I mean, I think this is a pretty sec successful attempt. So far, no artifacting and I am proud. This is a good 15 minutes in the making now. I've been just overclocking and undervolting for about 15 minutes. And if by the time this benchmark has ended, no artifacting has occurred, I will consider this a successful overclocking and undervolting attempt. And that will be the end of the video.
and another clean run for the Sapphire R9390X Tri-X 8GB card. Well, if you would like to copy my settings, I have them all in text in the description of this video. Um, I also have them on screen right now, so you can copy them if you wish to. If you're wondering why I don't have all of these frequencies set to 1085 MHz, that is because if you don't allow at least a little bit of fluctuation in the frequencies, it will become unstable and start to crash. So you have to allow at least, I'd say, down to a thousand megahertz in fluctuation for your graphics card for it to be completely stable in all cases. So that's what I've done here. These are my voltages. These are my frequencies. This is my power limit. I have set to plus 50%. State one and state two and state three are far above what they were before and that brings up the temperatures quite a bit and so that concludes my tutorial of overclocking and undervolting this card using the radeon wattman software don't try having msi afterburner installed though at the same time because they will conflict with each other and that will be very annoying and cause some very very disappointing stuttering stuttering at idle even so don't have both installed so yeah if you liked it then like it if you disliked it then you can do that as well i just stole someone's outro i don't even know whose outro that was but it wasn't mine uh so there goodbye ravioli